You're now tuning into the Who and How Club with your host, Eris Dejan. Get the jitters out. We ready? We're good? All right. Shout out to everybody on the live. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy, Eris Dejan, with another episode, episode three. It's official. We are here. Uh, I want to welcome everybody. You are the Who and How Club. I am the Who and How Club. We are the Who and How Club. And you are officially tuning in. I want to send a special shout out to everybody who's on the live uh, stream right now on Instagram. We appreciate you uh, watching us and tuning in. Um, today's a big episode, and I'm gonna do my best to take my time. No rush today. I've been waiting for this mm. moment to have somebody else in front of me, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I can actually, you know, bring that energy out. Because doing the show by myself, sitting in a room just talking to myself, there's a bit of a challenge. You know it's what I mean? It's not the same. It's not, it's not the, the same. same. It's not the same. So I got mm. some energy in the room with us tonight. So. Everybody's going to be tuning in. Uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, follow us. Follow the, the, the show at Who How Club on all social media uh, platforms. Also, the website is whohowclub.com. And uh, also, you can follow me at Only One Eris, O N L Y, the number one, A R Y S. And just connect with me over either email, Instagram, Twitter, or even, yeah, just wherever you can find me or the show connect with us um just before the show uh you know before we pushed record we mm. said a little prayer mm -hmm. and we just wanted to thank our creator and uh you know just welcome that energy in mm -hmm. so wherever you're at tonight anybody listening in just know that um you know we we're, we're spreading that energy to you as well and we really appreciate everybody just tuning in and being a part of this this experience tonight and we're spreading that joy all across, uh, you know, the platforms tonight. Yes. Um, <laughs> we got to get the lights back. You got it? All right. Um, so aside from the, the general stuff, you know, um, I decided that whenever I have a guest on the show, uh, you know, it's not just an interview. It's a conversation. It's the sharing of energy, sharing of perspectives, sharing of hearts, minds, souls, etc. Um, so it's not just an interview. Um, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that uh, people get to experience this and be a part of this experience. That's why I choose to record the, these, these types of episodes and invite people onto the live stream and all of that jazz. So uh, it's definitely a special episode. So if you want to introduce yourself, yeah, let the people know who this voice is in the background. Yeah. My name is Sage Longclaws. This is my. <laughs> we're in my backyard. We are. We here are in downtown Toronto. So we're getting bitten right now. A little uh, bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. okay. It's worth it. So for those who listened to last week's episode, I announced who the first guest of the uh, show would be, and this gentleman is a colleague of mine. Uh, we work together, and uh, we've connected in in a, in many ways. So I thought it would be right for him to be sort of like the guinea pig, mm -hmm. and to let's test the waters with. Yeah, with the with him, and see how this goes. But all in all, I think it was uh, the way him and I have connected. I thought I want I wanted to take that out of the work setting and go into his setting, into yeah. his environment, and to meet him where he's at, and to just have a conversation and to share it with all of you. Um, before we get into who Sage is and and the crux of this uh, episode, uh, if you guys remember last week, I also asked a question. Uh, which was uh, I was pretty much I was curious to know who who did what over the long weekend uh, and I I, wa I was very specific I wanted to know who was not partying or drinking or getting hella you know shit faced I guess to post it on Instagram and show those stories I wanted to know who did what outside of you know the norm um, because obviously as you guys know I kind of chilled I played it low key. Um, so I did have a, su a few submissions, and I wanted to just shed light on one of the submissions that was pretty uh, dope. She shared uh, what she did. 
And if you want to follow this person, this submission comes from at Swati Garg. And that's S-W-A-T-I-G-A-R-G-G. She's uh, definitely a supporter of the show and the movement. Um, So Swati Garg, she submitted last week. She said that. All right, let's read it verbatim. She said, hey, I just listened to your new episode, Trust Your Guts. As you ask people to touch base with you who didn't party or uh, or cottage for the long weekend. Uh, She said, Saturday, I took my housemates dogs to the park and walked around Farmer's Market and then went for meditation, which I was missing for a long time. She said uh, that was on Saturday. Sage, do you meditate? I try to. It's yeah. tough, though, you know, yeah. to keep your mind clear for like five minutes even. Mm. 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 When's yeah. the last time you meditated? I tried to do it earlier today, actually. Yeah. Like before the show? <laughs> yeah. Like for the show purpose? purposes? Yeah it, was, or? yeah, it was a few hours ago. I was just laying there trying to do it. Laying? <laughs> yeah, How did like, it go? How did it go? Nah, it went okay. But then lyrics always come to my mind from like a song or something, right? So Say that again? Lyrics always lyrics. come into my mind, right? Okay, from okay. a song or something. Yeah. So then I just started thinking about that. Okay, okay. Mm. So th- w- would you say it was a successful meditation? Yeah, it was good. Feel it right. Because sometimes you just got to sit there and try and stop thinking and just be. Mm. And so it was nice to just sit there, let your mind clear for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Is that something you kind of needed before we, we sat together? Yeah. That kinda yeah, like because sometimes right? yeah, cause sometimes you just want to be clear before you take something on, right? So... I find meditation works quite well. And it, even just a couple of minutes will yes. work, right? So yes. it doesn't have to be like a hour-long thing. Yes, yes. Mm. Mm, I agree. We'll, uh, we'll stick a pin in that and get back to that. She said, Sunday, uh, I went to church as always, and then I had to be the MC at the receptionist, so I was working the evening. And today, which I think was the Monday, um, she said, I spoke to all my family back in India. Probably will go for another meditation session or go to the beach to relax. Hence, no crazy weekend plans for her <laughs> or for me mm-hmm. is what she said. Um, and then she added some stuff about the gut feeling and the concept of the episode, which uh, we don't need to get into that. But we, I just want, I was curious to know, you know, who did what last week? Um, <clears throat> Sage, what did you do over the long weekend? <sighs> Not much. Me and um, I I think I went out the Friday night Mm -hmm. with uh, Natalie. And so that was fun. Friend of mine, my girlfriend. Natalie is the girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And so that was fun. That was nice. Yeah. Uh, But then we went out on, I didn't do much, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, But then we went to Woodbine Beach on Monday. And that was fun. I actually got kind of burnt, so my stomach and that is still <laughs> a, little, a little tight with the shirt. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to share your stories, right? If I ask you something on the show, I'm looking for your submissions. I'm looking for your, sh- uh, your stories. I want to I wanna share your experiences on the show as well. You're a part of the club just as much as Sage is and just as much as I am. This mm-hmm. is mine. This is yours. This is ours. Um, so, uh, yeah, feel free to send me your stories, uh, especially after today. We're going to be introducing a new segment um, called Ask the Club. Um, so that's where everybody gets a chance to pose some questions. Uh, it could be about anything. Obviously, the guest on the show will also uh, have some questions of their own to either bring uh, to the table to ask me or you folks out there. And you folks out there can also answer the questions that are asked. Um, so we'll introduce that a bit later. But for now, we're going to jump right into it. And get mm. to know Sage. Mm-hmm. Yes. Sage Long Claw or Claws. It's actually Claws. Yeah, it's, it's plural. plural. Okay. Yeah, it's plural. <laughs> so you want to talk about your name? Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming people always ask about your name. Yeah, Sage Long and Claws. Where it derives from and yeah. all of that. Initially. Uh, talk into the mic. Talk into the mic. Yeah. So I'm from Manitoba. Okay. Yeah. And so my uh, reserve is called Weiwei Capo. Okay. It's like right by the. So I Sage is, is native, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, native, you, yeah. Aboriginal, Indigenous. Yes. Yeah. And so Long Claws is um, a native that derives from Weiwei Sikapo in Long Plains, First Can Nation. Can I pronounce that? Let me, Weiwei Weiwei Sikapo. Weiwei Sikapo. Yeah. And what is that? It's a reserve. Okay. Um, it's a nice reserve. I enjoy it a lot. Yes. And um, that's kind of where my family lineage comes from. Mm. And Long Claws, they've been around for a long time, hundreds of years, you know. Yeah, back in the day... Um, before there was the Canada and American border, like yes. North Dakota, yes. Southern Manitoba, Southern Saskatchewan, mm. 
want to say Minnesota. Yes. They were all kind of like in with each other. Okay. Um, our people back then. So Long Claws was a name that came from that time period. That was like 1700 years ago or in the 1700 century. And now today, it's just a great name to have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you see Long Claws, I'm like, I want that name. Man. I know. That's a, I know. That's like a superhero name or like a Yeah, my friends at school used to code me. Yeah, like Wolverine. Like yes. an X Men, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So everybody in your family has that last name. Yeah. That yeah. was okay. Yeah. Now excuse the ignorance. Is there ever a time where like you might have a different actually no. I, I think I know the answer to this question, but um like how far does that name go back? See the thing is is like once is you get past like a hundred years ago. There really is nothing recorded, okay. right? So everything's got to be passed down orally. Okay. Um, that's about as far as as I can think of it to go. Like, if it, like other famous last names are Sitting Bull. Yes. Things like that. That's in your family or no? No, just all pe- people that were, you know, other okay. last names that are around yes. at the time. Yes. But, yeah, Long Claws, I just can't really think of it past, like, the 1900s. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So... No, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah, when I first, uh, I think I found out your name uh, when I was asking for your email address. Yeah. Either your email address or your Instagram. And uh, yeah, you were like, yeah, that's my name. So I thought that was pretty unique. Unique. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, Maybe we could talk about how we know each other a little bit. Yes. Um, I try not to focus on what we do because I truly believe that a lot of people they'll try to define themselves based on what they do. And I think that we're deeper than that. Mm-hmm. But I think still acknowledging the things that we do, I mean, it's still an extension of mm-hmm. who we are, right? No, yeah, I think the population that we serve yes. is important, right? Yes, yes. So maybe we want to talk about how we know each other and... Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All right, so Sage and I know each other from work. Um, we won't delve into like positions and stuff like that or titles, but him and I pretty much work together uh, mm-hmm. in an organization that serves, um, you know, the homeless population. Mm-hmm. And um, Sage is pretty new to the organization, as mm-hmm. am I. Um, but yeah, like we we know each other through work. We've worked together for not not that long. We've been in training. <laughs> we were in training for a while. Then we uh, worked together uh, for the past couple months now. Uh, Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until we had like a really dope conversation at work where I felt like, okay, this guy, (laughs) I fucks with this guy. (laughs) Like I could really connect with this guy outside of yeah outside of work like yeah. i feel like you and i would be friends correct mm-hmm. me if i'm wrong like yeah i feel like we'll be friends yeah or or and, and you're also a tourist too right yeah yeah so, so we got we that. connected on that too yeah, yeah so what's it like working with me <laughs> <laughs> it's the best man <laughs> i'm fucking with you i'm gonna say never a dull moment you know? <laughs> <laughs> so why do you why do you do the work that you do why did you choose this uh field you know, I really enjoy it, especially the last three months, four months, like getting to know those guys, yeah. getting to understand, especially here in Toronto. It's a lot different than on Manitoba. You don't get so many people from all over the world. Mm. I mean, to be blunt, mm. all the different ethnicities and, yeah. you know, when you get to actually know some of these people, you realize yes. it's much further than addiction or their choices in their, their life their problems their issues, right yeah a lot of guys struggle with mental health in some form or another and yes a lot of them don't have the kind of support that i had mm. growing up mm. you know what i mean like some especially some of the younger guys the older guys they're in a different space or a different time i suppose but the younger guys like the guys in their late 20s early 30s i don't think they ever had much support do you feel like there's more hope for the younger folks that we serve versus the older folks to an extent it seems like the older folks, since they've already been through it, yes. it's like they understand or they take their time. Yes. Trying to find housing or whatever. But the younger guys, it's like, I don't know. I think a lot of them struggle with whatever issues, trauma they came up with. Yes. Or currently, like their mental health. And even things like, you know, even things like having seizures, mm. right, on a regular basis. Mm. Like how can you possibly work certain jobs if you're having seizures mm. here and there, right? And it, the rest of the time, they're fine, you know? So I could really kind of begin to understand that when you sit down and actually have a real conversation with these guys and ladies. 
and ladies yes yeah. for from your perspective do you find that maybe some of the older folks are kind of stuck in their ways like do you remember when we were younger people would say like yeah. you know we we saw people who were older than us and uh they would become stuck in their ways mm -hmm. they weren't open to changing anything about whether it was about themselves or their environment they just got su stuck in mm -hmm. their ways a certain generation got stuck mm. and um do you feel like a lot of the older folks that we choose or sorry that we try to support they don't want the help or they're refusing it because they they don't want to change like yeah. this is like they're kind of stuck in this uh yeah you can kind of see it i mean a lot of a lot of what you do see is uh, a lot of anxiety and to some degree like some kind of depression right mm -hmm. i mean i'm not a psychiatrist yes. i can't give disorders yeah. but it just seems like they can't seem to get the next step that they need in order to just simply get housing or make that um job application right yeah whereas many of us can and when they get stuck in their ways i guess maybe that's all they know yeah it's kind of being on the it's streets for know. the last 10 yeah. 15 20 yeah. years yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and i and i imagine too like a few of them their family members in that probably step away step aside or whatever let it them is do their thing. let them do their thing right so so it becomes a choice at that point no right yeah are people are people do you find that people like that's a lifestyle yeah like people have chosen to live this lifestyle once they get to like 40 or something 35 it's like they this is the life that they live now mm -hmm. right and it's like what's the point of because you want to have a career let's say let's say we have a career starting today like we're in our 30s right we could keep you have a 25 year 30 year career by the time you're 60 <laughs> yeah and these guys you know they hit 40 and stuff they're like oh the hell with it that's it yeah, yeah. <laughs> i kind of see that that's why i got more with the younger guys you know yeah yeah i i, I could go into the work thing so much because uh it, it can be a bit depressing too like we you know, we get paid to help these folks yeah. or support them. I try not to use the word help anymore. No, it's, me neither. You know what I mean? I don't think I'm able to help anybody. <laughs> but supporting, I think I'm able to do that yeah. to the best of my capability and as much as another person wants the support. Because you can't support someone who doesn't want it. Yeah, that's but, what I mean. Or help someone, right? So, like, we just have to meet people where they're at mm -hmm. and do our best to kind of meet them where they're at and adjust ourselves to their their lifestyles their yeah. their views on things and mm -hmm. you know some of these people might not ever get the help that we think they need maybe no. they don't think they need the help that we think they need mm -hmm. maybe housing isn't the answer yeah well that's what i started to realize you take a step back and like just simply getting up in the morning mm -hmm. doing breakfast at eight o'clock doing lunch the at 12 the structure the structure of it being there for nighttime whatever it is yes, right yes. just that simple structure is a lot for these guys yeah. and girls right so that in and of itself plus if you have us come in and just you know really just have a conversation with them yeah. talk to them like you're on the same level with them yeah. regardless of whatever their appearance is yeah or where they're at uh we didn't cheers i want us to cheers for <laughs> quickly uh the lights the sensor mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah let's cheers to a good episode mm -hmm. welcome to the who and how club sir yeah Great you're to be to here. You're supposed to drink when you oh, drink. Oh, like yeah, okay. Like sir, eye to eye, eye to eye. Oh, okay. That's kind of intimate. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to I share a little something with the listeners because I, 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 I'll never lie to my listeners. Now, I told uh, them I don't drink alcohol. But tonight I decided to, you know, bust mm -hmm. the wine open. Mm -hmm. Sage brought the wine and uh, we thought we would celebrate. It's and summer. So, it's, it's a summer. summer night. It's a nice summer night. We're in the backyard. This is this is what a summer should be like. Mm -hmm. So we thought just to celebrate the this event, you know, sip on some wine and just enjoy this moment. Mm. Um, and then you're moving, right? Like yeah. this is it. you're gonna be out of here. Yeah, soon. I was here for about almost two years, and now we're gonna be moving at the end of the month. So okay. it's a damn shame because I got this whole backyard going, and yeah, it's now it's all beautiful. green, yeah. green. Yeah, it's all green here. Yes. So. And and just to let the listeners know, I also, I don't know Sage. <laughs> like we've had one dope, really dope conversation at yeah. work, and it was just from that where I thought maybe, you know, this would be great. I've never the questions I'm asking him tonight. I haven't ever. I have never asked him these questions. I'm getting to know him yeah. uh, with all of you. We also got the dogs and cats in the background, so they might yeah. make a little appearance. A little noise. Some noise. Yeah. Hopefully, we got a kitten too. But oh, there she is. She's there. So what's her name? I think it's Simba right now. So, she <laughs> so she's Simba. Yeah. And who's this big guy here? Uh, he's Mac. 
Mac, yeah. and who else we got? And Indy, like Indiana Jones, but he's inside. He's keeping his eye on the front and door, I think. And cat sneaking right behind oh, you. That's Olivia Benson. Olivia Benson. The one and only. And where does that name come from again? Who's oh, Olivia? from uh, Law and Order. Law and Order, yes, yes, Law and yes, Order. Yes, 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 yeah, I know. She's really like that, though. So uh, you mentioned... Uh, 30. Actually, no, let me ask you this. So were you always in this field prior to me no, meeting you? No. So what no. got you into this field? Or what uh, were you doing before? Uh, well, for about a year there, I wasn't doing anything. I was just kind of laying low. And this was when you were back home, before you came to Toronto? Yeah, like, so I was um, I was a, a lawyer, basically, right? So I did my law, law school out in Manitoba. Finished up at, like, 2014. You can hear the airplane. It's crazy, I eh? love it, eh? <laughs> And then um, I did a year of articling, and then I moved out here in, like, 2015. So that was, like, four years ago. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so then I practiced for three years. And I'll tell you something wild. Like, I was an assistant crown attorney in northern Ontario. Mm. And it was a very good job, very good position. And I ended up getting an impaired charge. Mm. And so I wasn't able to continue practicing. Okay. And um, that was a hard blow. So what is, what is an, an impaired charge for like, those who don't know? Like a drinking and driving charge. Yeah. But to get that as an assistant crown attorney was fucked you up. Mm-hmm. Fucked yeah, up. yeah, 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 the whole thing. Okay. And so when it came back to Winnipeg, or I mean Toronto, um, the issue was is that I wasn't able to continue practicing as an assistant crown because yeah. I now have this charge, this open charge. Yes. But I also wasn't able to drive, <laughs> you know, so right, because right. I was in the realm of criminal law. Yes. So uh, for those that don't know, here in Toronto, it's um, there's like seven eight courthouses right yes. so those courthouses uh, you gotta drive to mm. you just can't show up right. on the bus or whatever right? right on transit so it took me a while to accept that and i let it go basically and then for the last year i've just been building or working on myself really are you able to uh, hold on pause that are we on live if you go on yours what about on yours can you go on it and it's there, right? It's not on mine for some reason. So are you on your laptop? No, I was on mine as well. Oh, because it hasn't been posted yet. Sorry about that. Uh, that's a dumb, uh, that's a blonde moment. <laughs> <laughs> are you able to, sorry about that. Can, are you able to get back? Yeah. To practice and everything yeah, like so that? Yeah, so the way like, is, is like, like in my eyes now like the hard part's over right okay. went to law school did the articling because even at the transfer from manitoba to ontario right mm. so i mean just to get out here you know ran my own practice all that so right now my membership is suspended yeah is what it's called right yeah. so if i did find maybe in a few years i could always go back to it right are you are you able to take us to that moment mm, like the whole time like during the, that time like when you got the charge and your your thought process and that yeah moment, like what you were thinking well initially i thought hey like well, i'll get through this you know yeah. bounce back and then um at that time period it was very tough mm. because what had actually happened is i got two mm. so more than one and so when i got the one um about 30 days later i got another one <laughs> <laughs> you're a wild and boy so what i <laughs> Like, I won't talk about the first one because it's right, still right. open, no, right? No, of course. Yeah. But the second one, it was difficult. I was taking... Um, well, what helped you ke- keep going? Like, what you said it was difficult and you made it out of it, right? And yeah. You, like well, I mean, at the time period, it was difficult because I was I was being an assistant crown attorney out on reserves in northern mm. Ontario. And mm. it's not like reserves here. It's not like Six Nations, right. which is a very nice reserve. Yeah. In northern uh, Ontario, it's very difficult. Right. Like guy, like people struggle, right? Like for real, no, right? Of course, so yeah, I'm listening. Um, so what had happened is that uh, the second charge, I was taking lorazepam, and I just had a couple drinks, and that was it. I pretty much was just out of it. I was in my car. Um, and so when you come back to Toronto afterwards, like I was with my ex at the time, we were together for a long time. Yeah. And everything kind of just fell apart. I'd say like in four months. 
you know and this was in like like because of that 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 was that sort of charge. like the outcome yeah so why were you t- taking those things or why i was taking you drinking what was yeah. there something that you were going through where you needed those those yeah things? like the lorazepam was nice uh, it wasn't prescribed to me but i was just taking it to kind of dull between days almost like mm. some of those charges are very difficult it's difficult to like see your own people like because it's not like out here right mm. like you go to the court system uh, there's a lot of different ethnicities yeah. people right ethnicities, yeah. ethnicities. Yeah. and out in um on northern ontario it's like i don't know maybe 90 percent of the, p- the accused are like aboriginal huh. so it's difficult to see that like yeah. every day and i'm like you know what feels like Sending some of these people into custody, or, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. Giving these people, following up on these people's charges, stuff like that. Yeah. And so, I was taking lorazepam, and it, it was fine. Like you know, like it was helping me. But when you mix it just with a couple drinks, it's like boom, it just hits you. Yeah. And so at the time period, yeah, I was driving. That was it. Yeah. Um, but it was the aftermath of all that when I came back here. Like I just slipped. You <laughs> know, like I could not focus anymore. I was able to keep practicing law and stuff. Yes, yes. But after maybe six months, because this was like uh, in August and September of 2017, so it's almost two years ago Very, now. Yeah, that's yeah. not that long ago. It's really not. So, so at what point, hold on one second, you should be able to go on live when someone is live, though. No? <laughs> so if I went to the Who and How clubs, but I did, and it didn't, uh, sorry, say. Hmm. I'm just I'm just curious to know if somebody uh Okay, I get it. You're right. So at what point so you come here now? Mhm. Yeah, see. That's good. So at what point? Sorry. <laughs> That's us. So at w- when do you decide that it's like okay, now I want to do this type of work? It was um because you're you're clearly you know you had a switch. Something must have hit you where you're like, okay. Well, I moved to this place like maybe January 2018. Yeah. And then that first year, man, I just, you know, uh, I just didn't really do anything. Mm. I just kind of laid low. Were you trying to figure out what you wanted to do? I think like what the next step was for yourself? See, the thing is, is like, I'm 31 today, right? So this happens when I'm like 30. Like, law school, like, it was no joke. Like, I had to get my ba that took four years you know my early 20s yeah man like took me 10 like you know a good long time to get there and so to watch it all just disappear it took me a long time to just man like it was pretty depressing you know a lot of times there you didn't really think i wasn't sure what to do i was thinking about like taking off to thailand and never coming back (laughs) (laughs) funny i'm thinking about that right Right? now like you know like we (laughs) So, so did meditation play a part in helping you get better or what, what helped you? Cause, cause you're here today sitting across from me. Yeah. I see you at work. I see the work that we're trying to do. We're trying to support people. You know what I mean? Clearly you have not given up. I don't know if that's, well, that's a, yeah. I don't know if that's a Taurus thing. I don't <laughs> know if that's a sage thing. Like walk me through what kept you going and not giving up. Initially. Yeah. Cause you made some mistakes. That's, yeah. those are mistakes. Yeah. But what kept you? Initially, it was, n- like, nothing. It was just for months there. And, and it was it's weird to think back on because, like, when you watch the days just fall off the calendar like that and just weeks go on and on. And uh, I don't know. I Like, I got into video games, like Destiny. I can't get enough <laughs> of it, right? <laughs> and uh, I had a whole online, like, uh, group that yeah. I would talk to. Yeah. So those people really helped me wow i know right wow. because because i tried to lay low inside my house like i you know yeah. i was a very social person before especially in winnipeg and out yes. here like yes. i you know i like having lots of friends and yeah. being in different groups of friends right yeah. but when that stuff hit i just wanted to be alone and like the other I thing i was going to tell you is like my whole life i pushed like i've always pushed like i had no not that i had no business going to law school it's just i wasn't you go to law school man you meet people that are you know like a students in high school like them guys you know didn't go out and do nothing just you know on the books those are your competitors and they grade you on a, a curve like uh, the classes everything's graded on a curve so it yes. doesn't matter how well you do it's how yes. well you do against your colleagues yes so there's a high level level of competition there, and for me, I didn't even care. 
<laughs> I just kept pushing. Just like did it. I just did it, just man. Did it. Like I grew up playing hockey. That's a tourist. Yeah, thing. right. Yeah. Like I, I just don't <laughs> care. <really. Yeah. laughs> because all them dudes too, right? Like a lot of them dudes, like they grow up. You know, their parents are doctors. Their parents right. are lawyers. They it's do this. The you know, it's, it's the just, norm. For them. It's just another. You yeah. know, yeah. it's just and, you know getting in there. I want. I appreciate you sharing all of this. Like I commend you, and I can relate to some of the things you're saying. Mm-hmm. So. Um, Everything you're saying right now is like hitting me. I I think that like mm-hmm. just the fact that you're still here. Well, that's what it feels like, right? Like the ability to come on here and talk about it openly is quite a long journey to get here, right? And yeah, like my family support, like my mom and uh, my dad and my sisters and stuff, they've yes. all been great, right? Yeah. And I've been in mo- there have been moments in my life where I had to uh, tell myself. Or remind myself that like this too shall pass kind of thing. And yeah. I know it sounds a bit corny, but pardon me? You can start again. Yeah, yeah, start again. Yeah, yeah. Uh we're at well, yeah, we're at thirty minutes, which is good, so we'll try again, yeah, go again. Because I'll choose the best half. Or whatever, however long we go. Hmm. Um I know it sounds really corny to say, like, this too shall pass. There were moments where, like, I was ready to give up, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, like, in retrospect, I realized that if you just give yourself one more day, like, go to sleep, Mm -hmm. sleep it off, Mm -hmm. wake up, you'll feel different. Mm -hmm. And then you'll realize, okay, I survived another day. I survived two days. Two days has now been a week. That feeling that I had is now last week, two weeks ago. You just keep pushing. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm resonating with what you were saying about keeping, keep pushing mm-hmm. in everything that you do, especially when times get hard or difficult, etc., or even any type of challenge. Like, you don't give up. No. I was raised like, you just never give up. Even if I wanted to give up, I don't think I'm able to because it's in me. It's it's like a chip. Mm-hmm. Like, I, someone inserted this thing in me that, like, no matter how much I might be hurt, mm-hmm. how much I might, uh, you know, be disappointed, I'll wake up tomorrow and just say, fuck it. All right, mm-hmm. let's go. Let's mm-hmm. go. Let's get back on track, you know? Or may, it might take me a few more days than just a day. Mm-hmm. Um, but never giving up is really important. And see, that's the other thing, too, that I learned when I was um, going through all this after a year there. It was like, it's okay to, like, find a job that's, you know, maybe not pushing you your full potential and just lay low on it for years you know if it, if that's what makes you happy yes do that if you find happiness if you find it, yes. happiness in that it's not all about like pushing yourself because that was the thing i pushed myself every day since i was like 14 or something you know <laughs> and then when i real, you know yeah, yeah, yeah like when i got there when this all finally happened to me right yes it was it was crazy just to take a break Mm. like to sit back and just not do that anymore like yeah. you know to push yourself every day but then eventually after six months go by you're like what the hell <laughs> <laughs> right you gotta get back into it yeah. like you, and have, that's like, yeah, you like, have to at some point yeah. you can't just you can't remain idle well i guess what i'm saying is like it's in my nature to do yes. that right i i would be uh, i couldn't imagine not trying to be like that anymore yes like being how i was last yes. year just yes. no nah, it's not like me man let's talk about h Mm. Cause you mentioned you know you're 31 and like we were talking mm. about the people we support and like you know we're 30 and they're they're probably 45 they're like you know fuck this forget it yeah we're 30 I just turned 30 April 26 our birthdays mm. are how many days apart two two days apart so you're the 24 28 28 yeah. no so you're yes I'm the 26 I'm literally two. like less than a year yeah. yes Older and one of our colleagues at work is also two days before uh, mm-hmm. uh, me four before yours mm-hmm. uh, you know what I'm talking about mm. T Mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah. 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 Uh, what does it What does it mean to you to be this age? Man, I does s- it mean anything to you? Does it is Does this affect you at all? In uh, I swear to God, like it, it didn't mean anything to me except I just checked myself when I turned thirty. Hold on one second. Sorry. Yeah, it didn't mean anything to me. I just checked myself when I was thirty. Man, I swear, I just like sat down. On my 30th, yourself, 30th, right? 30th birthday, just like pulled out a pad and was like, okay, where am I at? You mm. know, like with my health, with my love life, financially, <laughs> career wise, you know. Mm. And that's really what it was. It wasn't like I feel older. Right. Because it's like. But was it, a th- was it because 30 came about? 
Yeah. Or was it because it was just a feeling that you had that you're like, okay, now I got to plan some new things for myself? Or was it because I turned this age that yeah. I got to do this? Like for some people we know, like 30, they want to be established, quote unquote, whatever that mm-hmm. means, you know, the generic yeah, t- concept. meaning. Yeah, concept. Like yeah. a house, picket fence, or family or a child, whatever. Yeah. Was it the age that made that had you in that moment? No, not at all. Like what? What? It, it reminds me of like going out to the Caribbean or going out to some vacation that you wanted to do. Like if I set that for myself, let's say I'm going to do a vacation for four months, I don't give a shit about that vacation mm-hmm. until I'm on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> you know, until yeah. I'm like yeah. flying down and I'm, it just hits me all at once, yeah. right? Hold on one second. Huh? Is the card is full. Yeah. Son of a gun. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I forgot the SD card at home today. So we borrowed a card and it didn't have much space on it. So it's all good. Pardon me? That's fine. Like, I don't think I want everybody to listen to the episode mostly. Like the, these visuals are just a little teaser for them, like a little taste. And they get to interact with us over live. So that's I think that's more than enough. Yeah. Pardon me? It's a sign, yeah. I think that's how I wanted it, so it worked out anyway. Mm-hmm. But Sage, I'm having a deja fucking view <laughs> right now. So this is definitely meant to be. But yeah, no, I like it. Sage, uh, Sage lent us a uh, SD card for the camera, but you know, I left my actual stuff at home today, so we're good. We're good. As long as everybody's on live, I want to take a moment to just shout out everybody being a part of the conversation, tuning in, and uh, you know, you guys will get this episode tonight, and. Uh, yeah, anybody you want to shout out, Sage? Anybody yeah, I want to shout out Natalie, my love, and uh, I want to shout out. I want to say Teresa and P. Luch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then also Segmata and Riss. Yeah, those two. Shout shout them out. Shout out all the people out. I want to shout out my mom. Shout out everybody, all of the supporters, uh, all my friends and family, mm. just uh, supporting this movement. You know, speaking of giving up. Oh, yeah, my family, too. Yes, they yeah, might be watching that, too, yeah, especially yeah. the ones back in Mantle. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, you want to, speaking of giving up, I want to just go back to that part, too. Like, with this podcast, right? Mm. I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but, like, it took me a couple tries until I got it where I exactly, where I wanted it exactly to be. Yeah. And where I wanted it to be is exactly right now, in this moment, sitting across from you. Mm-hmm. But I tried a couple times prior to this, and it just, but this is my baby. Mm-hmm. This is an idea I took out of my brain and put it on a piece of table. I saw it. I, it became tangible, right? Mm-hmm. I wrote things down, et cetera, but it just wasn't working out. The way I envisioned it happening, it wasn't happening. Mm-hmm. I tried a couple times, but like now, but I didn't give up on it. I could have easily said, you know what, fuck it. Maybe this isn't meant to be. Maybe I should just leave it alone, leave this idea, you know, uh, whatever. Say something sort of negative to down myself, down my idea, and just give up. Mm. But I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I I, I revived. I feel like I'm on a different level. I'm on a high right now Mm -hmm. where, like, I'm seeing my idea literally. Like, I thought I was before. I thought it was on the table and I could see it. But I'm feeling it now. Mm. I feel like I'm in my yeah. zone. I feel like, like I can feel it, yeah. Mm. And that's what I always wanted. I wanted the person who I'm sitting across to also feel it. This is inclusive. This is for us. These conversations, this fearlessness to share what you just shared. Yeah. About your, your story. That's a piece of you that w- you don't ever have to revisit it until you speak about it. But mm. it, you went through that. Yeah. So someone could probably learn from that. Yeah, that was my hear. hope. You know what I mean? Because no. you're still here mm-hmm. across the table with me. I know. Well, that's the thing. I could pack up and head back to Winnipeg too, right? But no, nah, man. I want to stay out here. It's fun out here, you know? Hmm. It's I been good. You. I commend you. You're here. It's mm. time to be here. Mm. Um, but we were talking about the 30s and stuff like that. So um, what are your thoughts on people who who use age as like, those 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 monumental moments that they feel like they need to be in or at when they turn a certain age like do you have any thoughts on that is that a real thing like i hope not (laughs) you know like age is just it's just a number and it really is because like for me today 
like here now sitting with you i feel as happy and as smart like literally as smart as i've ever felt before mm. which is strange because i don't i don't practice you know law like i used to or even even reading books like i used to read all day every day yeah, right okay. but i actually literally feel like i'm more intuitive with yes. people understanding what's going on yeah. when people throw new stuff at me i'm on it you know it's no issue anymore yes Maybe that's because I had to go through what I went through, mm. too, right? Mm. But for me, age is just like, come on, man. Like, you turn 30, you turn 40. Like, for me, I want to live, like, the average age is 80. So, mm. like, I got another 50 to go, I feel. You know? I feel like I'm going to live forever. <laughs> yeah, right. You ever feel like that? <laughs> I don't feel yeah. like I'm going to die. No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think death is in the cards for me. <laughs> That's what I mean, man, you know? <laughs> like, I'm ready to be I just feel like every day, like, you could be better. Like, mm. you just be a better person. Or, like, you know, you could be in the best shape of your life in the next year if you want to be. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, yeah. if you want to be. Yeah, it it's doesn't matter what age you yeah, are. Yeah, right? It's up to you. It's up to you. <sighs> we should have had this conversation a long time ago. Yeah. This is good. This is good. Everything you're saying, I, I resonate with. But... Uh, obviously, if you were saying things that I didn't, like we would also have that honest conversation. Like that's why I created this platform so we could have honest conversations. I don't want I don't want to have people on here that I always agree with. But if mm-hmm. you find out that you do, I think that's how the club gets formed. Mm-hmm. The members, the numbers and members will start to increase because I'm looking for people who, again, aren't afraid to share pieces of themselves, mm. whether I agree or disagree. It's not about me. This yeah. is about us there's something it's above us you know yeah. like there are things going around us that we need to be aware of and i think conversation could really help in that when it comes to just sharing yeah and it, you know we were given mouths for a reason and voices to just sit and talk mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what the point of view is or the perspective like you have an experience i have an experience i'm sure we could learn from one another even though those experiences Mm-hmm. We're totally different on two mm-hmm. different spectrums, right? Exactly. We should be able to sit down and just share with each other. And hopefully someone else will get inspired by these conversations and not be afraid to talk. Mm-hmm. And not, try and, something and different. And think about the things you talk about. Because every word I believe, like, it, it's Im- like, if I just spoke negatively every day, I believe that there's power in that. And only negative shit. I'm spreading negativity around. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And like, just, we have the power to do that. Yeah, and just hating, you know? Just, <laughs> what? I, 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 there's this acronym, uh, NBH, Natural Born Haters. <laughs> That's what I call them. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think we exactly. have to be, be mindful of uh, how we speak and what we say. But I think when it comes to moments where you share with someone else your story, your experiences, there's nothing negative about that. No. You just got to be honest and real with yourself, right? With yourself, yeah. Well, first with yourself, right, to actually understand what's going on with you. It's more than just looking in the mirror, right? Mm. You got to think about it. Like, sometimes I feel emotions in that, and I don't really understand where they're coming from until I think back. Well, what did I do earlier today? Who I talked to, you know? What did I say earlier? Maybe it made me feel a little selfish. Reflect, self-reflection. Right? You know, it's yeah. more than just being, you know, hungry or something, <laughs> you know, your emotions. How would you describe... Uh, or how would you answer uh, who who you are? How who are you? If I were to ask who yeah. are you, what w- what's the first thing that comes to your mind? A Ojibwe for sure. But again, like I think of the same thing. Like um, I don't have to uh, en- endure the same kind of racism as my cousins and my family do because I don't look overly Aboriginal as yes, they yes. say they do. Yes, right. Yeah. So. I think everyone the, thinks you're a white boy. Yeah, right. <laughs> the, the, yeah, right. Just the, the way the I layer, look. Yeah. Like I'm a little more darker now because of the burned. I got burned, but but that's what I mean, right? That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Yes. And then the other thing is being a man, and then just being more in tune with myself these days. Like far more, I'm far more real with myself than I was six years ago. Let's yeah. say, yeah. you know, my mind was concentrated on something else. I was always chasing money or career or whatever it was yeah and now today i can just be just mm. sit here and be with you th- you guys <laughs> sitting here hanging out in the backyard with the dogs or wherever the cats are mm. at, right mm. this is life this yeah is life on life's terms right yeah and so i don't know in terms of who i am i guess i'm still trying to move forward with that yeah 
but I know, like, you know, I grew up playing hockey. I love sports, yeah. love video games, love conversations. Yeah. That's really what I'm about these days. Yeah. Uh, I feel like in just this little short time, like, we kind of covered, I like to focus on the who, what, when, where, why, and how, you know, and we really covered a lot of that just in little conversations, yeah. learning who you are, pieces of who you are, what you do, why. Mm-hmm. the when you know the things from your past and where you are now and stuff like that and um that's what i try to accomplish with ha- with people being on the show and like i also don't want the conversations to end here like this won't be the first time you're on the show i want to follow up with you bring you back and yeah follow that journey you know like we know who sage is today and we know where sage has been before mm-hmm. but what's next for sage mm-hmm. in your opinion What's tomorrow? What does tomorrow look like for Sage? Who's Sage tomorrow? In the next two years from now? Yeah, I wonder. I want to get back in a really good shape. That's the one thing I think he's thinking about. And then plus work too. I want to make work as easy as possible in the sense that it's left at work. I enjoy my life outside of it. See, I was so caught up before. When you're working and your mind is like you're 24-7, right? Yes. Like, you know. I ran into one of our clients just here on the street. <laughs> 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 the neighborhood we're in, like, we're downtown Toronto, so it's like yes. you see some of them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our summers will never be the same mm-mm, again. Mm-mm, Ever. Mm-mm. Ever. But, like, now it's different. I walk up, I'm like, hey, man, what's up? Fist pump, what throw up? him a dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, whatever it is, yeah, right? Yeah. Help a guy out. And that's where I kind of think where I'm going. I'm just going to keep staying low key as I've been because that's been really working for me and focus on work and finding my new place and hanging out with my moms and my family. Yes. Yeah. My friends. Find you. Get more friends. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Friendship. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was wild because being like playing Destiny and being online, yeah. like I got really deep with these people. Like I got hun- crazy, eh? hundreds of hours playing with I'm these people, you, video man. Games, video games play an important Yo, and integral. When I was like deep in my mind, like yeah. I was just like I was depressed, right? I'd get up at 9 a.m. and my friend would get up at 9 a.m. She lives out in New York State and we'd get on together and we'd play like all day. That's right? dope. It was That's so really dope. dope. <laughs> I That's never, really dope. never thought I'd see that. I'm, I'm finally playing games at the moment like i'm into the spider-man game right now yeah i heard I, that i'm happy that it it something has drawn dr- uh drew me in drew draw me in. drew i think it's drew right <laughs> i think <laughs> the last game that drew me in was god of war and yeah. I, uh, I beat it like 95 percent. i gotta kill a couple of valkyries but um mm. a game hasn't drawn me in since that game and now spider-man there's just these little things i think at this point in my life like i the little things really i find such joy in little things Mm -hmm. and in connecting with people people who i um what's the word i appreciate people more Mm -hmm. i would say you know and i I don't need a gang of people i don't need 10 i don't need 10 women in my life to make me happy Mm -hmm. i think if i just have one or two people in my life that just bring something to the table Mm -hmm. i'm I'm okay with that and i have my family like i i used to think i think when what you said earlier about chasing things and chasing money Mm -hmm. i don't need those things like you start to figure out need versus want Mm -hmm. you you differentiate between the two as you mature you understand the difference between the two what i always thought i needed i never needed that god and the universe excuse me and our creator and everything like that has already taken care of what we need now let me just focus on the things that i want Mm. and maybe you know gear my energy towards that and that those things will come to me when the time is right you know you practice patience yeah that's a big one and acknowledging what you already have Mm -hmm. maybe you want something but maybe you already have it you just have to acknowledge it and open your eyes to it Mm -hmm. you know and then life becomes so simple Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What do you think about that? No, man. Like, I think that, too. Patience and listening. That's a big thing I learned the last year. Listening to people talk. Yeah. And actually try and get down and understand what they're getting at or where they're coming from, too. You have any pet peeves? Mm. Just trying to think of some. 
I ride my bike now, so like. I <laughs> so you're my pet peeve. Yeah. <laughs> well, you must be mine, right? I can't stand. Shit, bikers. I can't stand when you're trying to like. I'm cycling in my fucking bike lane, and some guy <laughs> is in his automobile, and he's trying to make a right, and he's just like. Oh yeah, yeah. He, he's doesn't just, he doesn't. Even, he doesn't notice me. He doesn't. You know. Yeah. I don't well, know. You, you guys have made me a better driver because I'm always looking out for you guys. I can see why so many people get injured. Yeah. You know, oh, I've seen some sure. wild cyclists. Bikers shouldn't be on the street. You guys. They should allow you to to ride on the sidewalk. <laughs> be with the people. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be a vehicle, right? That's the concept, but nah, man, you guys could die very easily. Easily, yeah. I've seen guys like cut through traffic, especially in Toronto, right? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a busy place downtown. So, any other pet peeves? Mm, I'm trying to think of some. <sighs> you have to come back to me on that. It's gonna come back to me. You mentioned your girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you happy? Oh, yeah, of course. I love it. I what what yeah. does this relationship mean to you? Um, right now, it means a lot to me. I mean, she was there when when I was starting to get out of my depression. Mm. And that's when she came in. This was like last fall, right? And she means a lot to me because she feels like... Into the mic, into the mic. Yeah. It feels like she's been there. Um, helping me uh, climb out of that depression. She wasn't there when I was deep in it, and I don't think anybody would be around me back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, and that's the thing is like when I was, or maybe you know, I don't think it's coincidence, but I just seemed to be pulling myself out at the same time she came into my life, right? Mm. And uh, I remember too, like when I was first starting to. Before I got this position, yes, I got a I got a position as like doing uh, working with my hands in that because yes. I like doing renovations, yes. right? And that was great, but I did that for like five six weeks, and yeah. then realized I was going nowhere because of my education. And her, she just stayed with me that whole time, yeah. and now we've been hanging out a lot more because it's weird, like it's weird going from being able to have uh, disposable income, like on the regular, yeah, you know. To having none and then hanging out and having someone special in your life, right? So she was able to talk to me, be with me, speak with me. I guess it's a lot more conversations like the one we're having, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so she got a lot more deeper, I guess. Yes. And she's a little younger than me, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like <laughs> and that part I like too, yeah. you know? It's different because my ex, uh, she was a little older than me and we were together for a lot, a long time, so... That's also different, right? Yeah, yeah. Young energy is different than energy. Young when energy, you get a yeah. woman in your life that's like, she's a bit younger, she could teach you some things and well, support you in a different way. Dude, that's the only way. And you could teach her. Yeah, well, that's what I feel like. Like, yeah. I, I got a lot that I can teach her. But it went, yeah. like, just going out on Canada Day, like going to Woodbine Beach, there's no way in hell I would have did that. With Except she was... Else, yeah. <laughs> Well, no, with her, she, her energy. She woke up. She's like, da da, let's go oh, do this. Da 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 da. She's like, I'll get my bathing suit. We'll go. Keep you young. They keep you <laughs> yeah. young. I'm like, all I want to do is sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then we, fucking, you know, we you get can, out there. We get out there, and it's just like, yeah, I haven't been to the beach in forever. You know, so it was fun. Nice, beautiful day on Canada Day too. I'm happy for you. Yeah, I'm yeah. happy for you. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, I love being with her. It's really great. It's nice. All right, let me just shout out everybody. Let me take a moment to uh, just thank everybody listening to the Who and How Club. You are the Who and How Club. I am the Who and How Club. We are the Who and How Club. Go to our website, whohowclub.com, and you'll get links to all of our socials. Uh, you'll know exactly where to listen to the show on all streaming platforms, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. Uh, we are on uh, iHeartRadio, Podtail. Uh, Google Podcast, Google Play. I can, I could tune in. Let's go. Name one. We're on it. The show is on it. It's <laughs> official. That's how we're doing it this year, 2019. The next six months, we're gonna grind hard. I want to say thank you to everybody tuning in and supporting, because this is, this is my baby, and all of you are helping me, you know, raise this child, <laughs> this child, this idea of mine, and. Uh, I want to special s- send a special shout out uh, to uh, my producer in the background. Shout out to uh, her and helping us out with mm-hmm. today. And shout out to Natalie. Yeah, she's been great. 
watching us mm-hmm. uh, from afar. Mm-hmm. And shout out to Sage and his mom for letting us have the backyard. Mm-hmm. And dogs and the pet. See, that's energy right there. Everybody's just calm today. I know. Just the calmness in the back. Like the dogs just chilling right now. They feel it. Mm-hmm. We're around trees. We're around it. We're just around it. You know? Mm-hmm. This is what it should be like. Yeah. Feels nice. So we're going to introduce a new segment, ladies and gentlemen, which is called, which I like to call it, uh, or I'm deciding to call it, Ask the Club. Now, I am the club. You are the club. We are all the club. So any anybody that gets a question asked, you know, we all have the right to answer. So people can bring questions to the table. Uh, all of you watching in from afar uh, can answer these questions or pose some questions. And uh, what I like to do is have my guests uh, or our guests come on the show and have some questions for to bring to the table, too. So without further ado, welcome to Ask the Club. Sage, hmm. you got some questions? Yeah. yeah. You want to ask me? Is it a que- like a gen- general question to the club or to me directly? Or what do you got? Yeah, I just want to get your take on what do you think of... Uh Politics? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, Trump. <laughs> Get Trump going. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, Aboriginal Indigenous culture? Have you? What do you notice about it here in Toronto? Like, you got any insight? Or growing up? Can't find any. Mm-hmm. That's Can't lot. find it. And this is the closest I've been to, uh, you know, a, f- a, a person who is of that, you know what I mean? Culture, that, yeah. That ethnicity, that culture, whatever. Like... <laughs> Yeah, I, I think know. I think anybody <laughs> I think if you're not uh, anybody who's not white, I think that we're all the same. Mm. We're all of that same. We come from that. Uh, that is crazy. I know. You can hear that it. is crazy. That feels like it's right next to us. I know. And I think it's on the other side of the house. Right. Um, yeah. Like I don't I don't run into many. I mean, like working in this field. I've seen uh, a few indigenous folks that have fed into the stereotype, you know, mm. the drinking, mm-hmm. the alcoholics, the, mm-hmm. you know, I've seen a few on the trains on TTC and, you know, but it's hard to find anybody who is of an indigenous uh, descent or anything like that. Like, this is the closest I've been sitting yeah. across the table. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I think we all, us as uh, who aren't white, <laughs> Our, we come from the same place yeah and uh that's how i feel yeah yeah no i love it here i feel like this is gonna get awkward if i say the things that i said i have these <laughs> ki- types of conversations behind closed doors mm-hmm. but i'm uh, i don't give a fuck like yeah. I, i've created this platform it's my platform i'm gonna say what i want i just mm-hmm. think that if you're not white you're the same we're all we come like you are my brother no that's what i love native, about native black african yeah. whatever whatever it is yeah. you know asians come from black you know what I mean? We're all, we come from the same place and we all have similar stories. You know, things have been taken from us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah, most certainly. I don't think any, I think we all just need to, uh, that's what I like. Acknowledge it. each other a bit more. That's what I like here in Toronto. Like it's very, uh, you can just do your own thing, be your own person. Right. And different cultures clash, but they clash positively with each other. Yeah. That's what I love about it. You know, back in, and sometimes back in the prairies, you can see it a little more, like that racism. But there's not as many other cultures like there is here in Toronto. Like, it's a melting pot. It really right, is the right, way right, 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 people right. talk about it, right? right? Yeah. But, yeah, you would think, like, just because there are so many different cultures that maybe the racist, uh, racism would be lessened. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I don't think that. I think even amongst the cultures that are, we have the same blood, mm-hmm. there's racism amongst us, us as well. Yeah, and we need to start looking at each other as brothers and sisters. You mm-hmm. know, whether you're native, whether you're Asian, Filipino, any type of Asian, any type of you know what I'm saying, black Africans. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a war between like Africans and Jamaicans and stuff. Yeah, like that. that's but what like, I was gonna say. I didn't even know that until it, I got here. It makes no <laughs> sense. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It makes no <laughs> sense. I think we need to uh, just view each other as one. Yeah, and if we f- approach each other with love then we'll be successful in that and yeah maybe stop feeding into certain stereotypes you know Mm -hmm. like stereotypes come from a real place you know i think that if we all decided to stop feeding into those and maybe being more Mm self-aware 
mm-hmm. and are self more aware of who our brothers are and our sisters, then we'll be more successful as a community. Yeah, like a little more knowledge about the other culture will help stop yeah. the hate, you know? Or yeah. a little, make it more understanding where people are coming from. That's what I find. Yeah. Since I've been we're here. We're the majority. We're not the, we're not no, a minority. No, no, right? We're yeah. the majority. That's yeah. why I see it, too. What else you got? Uh, Yeah, what's your views on having children? That was my <laughs> question. Because <laughs> I feel like that's a question. <laughs> That you got, that you <laughs> that you can answer, <laughs> like you know, having kids right now at your age, or like you know, at mm. forty, you know, or yeah. would what would you think if you had kids at twenty, you know? Yeah, different stages. It was of your it life. was a it was a choice to not have kids early. Yeah, like I always knew that from myself. I didn't want to have children with someone that. Uh. It's going to be hard to say this without coming off as judgmental to other people. I mean, my mother had me when she was 19 years old. Hmm. I didn't. I Growing up, I always felt like just those weren't the right ages for me to have any children. Like, mm-hmm. I don't even know myself yet. So how can I bring another life into this world, into my world, without figuring who I am? I'm figuring out who I am. But that doesn't mean I'm judging other people in their stories. Th- that those are their stories. If you had children young, whoever, you know, kids having kids, whatever. Mm. I want children. I want daughters. I just want <laughs> little baby girls just coming up to me, you know, being mm-hmm. daddy's little girl. Mm. But I feel like because of the way that I am, I think too much, sometimes to my detriment. But in that, in this case, I have to think. I, I don't want to just have children with anybody. I don't want to have children when I'm not ready financially mentally physically mo- emotionally mm-hmm. especially with the person the partner that i'm choosing to create a life with mm-hmm. it's not just having a child and popping out i want to make sure the person that i have a child with doesn't want to have a child in a hospital do you know how difficult that is to to to, to mm-hmm. show someone that meant that 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 framework that frame of mind that i don't want my child birthed in a hospital mm-hmm. you want like a midwife someone at home mm. where it's safe no lights around Keep that umbilical cord attached for a little bit. Let the nutrients flow. Mm. You got to find someone who has that mentality, who understands that. Mm-hmm. Maybe I could teach them. That's fine. But it's it's it takes time. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to rush a, a, a something like that. So I want children. I think life is beautiful. Uh, new life, especially like I just I had an appointment today, an allergy test. Uh, an allergy appointment just to test uh, you know what I'm allergic to and stuff and I had a conversation with the doctor and she told me you know she's a new mom and we were just talking about life life is so new life is beautiful Mm. I'm excited to experience that but who knows when who knows when Mm -hmm. I I have a fear that maybe I might not get a chance to based on you know the finding of the right person Mm -hmm. there's a fear attached to that you know Mm. I don't know what do you think like in that, well, I just I have the same concept that you do in terms of not, am I ready? Like financially, career wise, do I know enough about myself when I'm younger? Yeah. Same thing. I wanted kids since I was, you know, kid myself. I knew I always wanted to be a father. Yeah. Still not today. Yes. <laughs> but you're not ready today. I'm not ready today. No way. I'm still trying to is there get myself. A- is there an age in your mind that you're like, okay, by yeah. this point? Right now it's like 36, 37 maybe. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. something like that. That'd be a good age. I don't know. That would be a good you, age. You know yourself. You know yeah. yourself good enough. 36. Yeah. Six. Well, that's not I me. Mean. You've been here for 36 years. <laughs> like, uh, if you don't know yourself by 36, <laughs> at least, you know, like, <sighs> something's going on. You're a really selfish guy. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, <laughs> not you, but just yeah, general, yeah, anybody. just hypothetically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's kind of what I think right now. And for me, it's also being able to have that energy when you're 36, 37. Yes. Because when you're a younger parent, it's like, you know, when you're in your 20s and stuff, you could probably move you their kid move a lot more, yeah, you know? Yeah, you could yeah. probably do that. And yeah. man, 37, it's like... You know, your kid, you know, by the time your kid's 20, you're, like, almost 60. I want to have something, I want to have something to pass down. Yeah. I'm still building who I, on who I am and, like, you know, the who and how club. You know, I want this to grow. I want to have something to pass down to my children. Mm -hmm. Until I've started that process, I don't think I want to bring someone into this life yet. Yeah. And also, I hope the person that I'm building with, my partner is also she also has that mentality and also wants to build to pass something down to our kids mm-hmm. something they can benefit off of 
so on and so on, you know? So mm -hmm. that's my answer to that. Mm -hmm. Can we throw another one at you? What you got? <laughs> I got something too. Like, I got a. Uh, were you scared of anything as a kid or lately? Like something. Fierce? Some, yeah, like something weird. Not weird, but. Like not you don't mean like nothing. Like I used to be scared of Muppets. Like still am. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, like yeah. the idea of some guy yeah. or some woman controlling Muppets. some puppet and Them like talking to scared. me and Them you know like sure like um you know, Kermit the Frog <laughs> the pig, I can't remember her name, but Can you try again? Hold on one second. Save that though. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at it. Save it. Save. And then what does it say? Post? What's the other one? Share it? Share it, yeah. And then do one last live, yeah. You gotta, no, you gotta swipe, yeah. Thank you. Muppets. Yes, Big Bird. And mm -hmm. all that. It's weird. Very weird. You're very weird, right? But they're like the other ones, you know, they kind of scare me a lot. Let me like, you know, I got I got friends that are scared of clowns, stuff like that. That makes yeah. a little more sense. But mm. nothing so nothing like oh, not succeeding. <laughs> I'm afraid of not succeeding. <laughs> nothing like that. No, you mean like something like uh, like I don't know, like uh, they didn't have it. Eh? There was a uh, huh. I'm definitely afraid of like bugs, like, like in big general, bugs, big bugs. Yeah. Like bugs that like if I were to step on it, it might still be alive kind of bug. Mm. Like, like I would hear the crunch. <laughs> like I can't. <laughs> you can't finish it off. Nah, and nah. <laughs> that would haunt me. Um, yeah. What have I been afraid of? Yeah, even lately and stuff. Like nothing scares you in the sense, you like know, an I actual animate thing. Yeah. You know, something that's living. Something that f that scares me. I think I'm really, this sucks. Like, I want to say something, but I nothing, I mean, it's still the insect thing, but I'm very, I'm pushing myself to be more fearless in certain things and people, especially. Like, mm -hmm. I find myself not fearing anybody, like, mm -hmm. per, like human wise. Mm. Like, I say, every, like, I have this affirmation, like, I will fear no man, woman, child, animal, mm -hmm. insect. Like, I say this on a daily basis. Because mm -hmm. I don't feel like those things are here for us to fear. But some people are afraid of their own brother. Mm -hmm. Like some black people, right? Like we walk down the street from like we'll, and we'll pass each other. Mm -hmm. But we don't look at each other. No. We're too afraid to say hello. Yeah, I know exactly what she's talking we're, about. We're afraid to adju address certain things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I'm not afraid of those things. So I think with not being afraid of those things helps me not be afraid of other things. That mm. might be like, like scary movies. I'll have nightmares for sure. Oh man, scary movies. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, like I still get those types of fears and chills and stuff like that. But at yeah. this moment, just the bugs thing, man. Just bugs. Really eh? bugs. Big bugs. Yeah. See, but bu I try not yeah. to kill bugs because I'm I'm valuing life a bit more. Mm. So I mm. try not to like. Sometimes my friends or like girls I'm around like they'll like stomp on an ant. I'm like fuck you. I don't even want. <laughs> I'm not even attracted to you anymore. Like why are you stepping on that ant? Like what that ant ever do? Leave the fly alone. <laughs> like the fly is fine. Let's actually try to get the fly out of here. Yeah. Let's work with. Yeah. It, you try know? and push him out. Yeah. yeah. I get sad fly away. when I like. Anything else? Any other mm. questions for the club or for me? No, I just had the three, man. I like <laughs> the fear question. Um, for those who are listening in, uh, please share your fears. Uh, if there's anything that you're afraid of, uh, whether it's currently or something you were afraid of when you were growing up, please share. Uh, DM us at Who How Club or on my page at Only One Eris, and I'll definitely share your fears on the next episode when I'm flying solo. Um before we close up, uh, is there anything else you want to add or you no, talk just, about or anything? I'm just really enjoying this. This is nice. Yeah. Especially being out here with all the, it's the smell, right? It's the smell of nature. It's nice. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's organic. It's 
this is where we're supposed to be yeah. at. Um, Cause <laughs> fuck. Cause you know, initially when you got here, I thought we'd do it in the kitchen. Yes. I was like, when you guys walked in, you guys were like, nah, yeah. we're going outside. <laughs> yeah. So Sage, we're not going to give the address out, but Sage lives in an area where there, there's a strong homeless population. Very strong. And actually one of our sites, you one might. of our sites that our organization that we manage and stuff like that is literally across the street. So if you hear any noise in the background, uh, you know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's share before we close off. Uh, I have a couple things we're going to f- we're going to close off on. Um, maybe we could share thoughts of uh, each other. Okay. What are your thoughts on me of me? When you from when you met me to now to this m- moment, what are your thoughts? Uh, you kind of remind remind me of myself. Like you're very independent, you're very driven, and you're not afraid to try on new things, right? And that part too, it takes time to grow from that because you can't just <laughs> you don't get good at things by winging it over and over and over again, right? It takes time and practice, thing and take new things on, right? Yeah. It might even take literally years to yeah. get there. Yeah. But one day you'll look back on it and after you nail out so many different um, activities to build your career or your your hobbies or whatever it is, right? And that's kind of what I think about you. That's where you remind me of me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm. What else do I think about you? Whatever. <laughs> I'm waiting to hear. Yeah. I, th- I think you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Truthfully? <laughs> <laughs> no yeah no it's e- it's you make it easy man it's the way you uh present yourself and it's the way you talk you're willing to give people their to their time you know to talk and express themselves and that part i really like i appreciate that because a lot of people they just they just move on to the next thing mm. they'll talk to you for a second and then they move on mm. But you, you kind of like, you see the bigger picture almost, mm. right? You can kind of see it. Like, you got that vision, right? So, mm. that's why I appreciate hanging out with you. It's nice. Ditto, ditto. I think that, uh, I like how you said, like, you, uh, I remind you of me. Because you definitely remind me. Yeah. Like, um, it's just that when we're in the work setting, we can't delve deep no. into certain things, right? But it's like, sometimes when you see someone, you're like... I would be cool with this guy outside of here. Mm -hmm. I know. And maybe not because we're alike, but because there's that fearlessness or that honesty. Like, I respect your honesty. Yeah. That's what, you know, one of my thoughts about you. Like, you're you're very honest. And I I, uh, tend to be drawn to honesty. Mm -hmm. To to an extent, obviously. I don't think that there's such thing as people being 100% honest. But the way you describe things... How you lay things out? You're just you straight to the point kind of guy. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. Yeah. If I could have five guys that are like that on a team, yeah. I'm g- I'm set. Yeah, because you you don't you don't you won't ask for more. You don't need to ask for more when you got people that are just let's get let's just get to the point. Let's get this over with. Mm-hmm. And you also, I find that you're not afraid to um, you're not afraid to be outspoken. Like yeah. you speak your mind. Mm-hmm. No matter the scenario. <laughs> and that I appreciate. Yeah. It took me a while to get to that point. You know, I would always keep things in my mind and like yeah. I was afraid of like hurting people's feelings and stuff like that. But not to say you're ruthless, but you're very just you speak your mind and you don't care if and then nine times out of ten what you're saying is the truth. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, yeah. I respect that and appreciate that about you as and a person. S- and see, for me, it was like the last year, year and a half when I was depressed and all that, right? That's when I began to realize. Was Into the mic. Mm, wow. and that's why I began to realize it's just yeah. being truthful and real with people and let them just take you as you are. Like, you're not always going to be right. Mm. And the things you're going to say, like, I can learn from myself. But that was the whole problem I had. You know, the last 10 years when I was uh, pushing, pushing, pushing and doing all that stuff, I was spinning webs of lies and and talking to people Mm. in one form and talking to other people in a different way. Mm. Or I was letting people down that Mm. I knew I could get away with. And that's why in this last year, I I changed all that. I was like, fuck that. Like, I'm going to sit here and be real with people because I tell you the truth and you could take it or leave it or whatever it is. But if I don't tell you the truth, then... How are you supposed to react to 
who I am or who I'm or what I'm telling you. Because if I if I dilly dally or if I fluff it up, then it might mess up your reaction to whatever I'm telling you. Yeah. All right. And that's how you start spinning lies. And that's where it starts to get easier like that. Yes. And so that's why today I'm very blunt with people. I'm very open with people because, yeah. again, I'm not afraid yeah. <laughs> of what may come from it. Because yeah. I've already gone through a lot, <laughs> you know. So I mean, how much worse could it get? That's where fearlessness <laughs> comes from. When you've been through shit, right? Yeah. You're not like, afraid of the consequences. No, not like, even, you know. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready for what comes with this because I've been, I've already survived so much. That's what I'm saying, right? And then that's what I don't learned. benefit from lying. No, I not anymore. I'm you starting got, to realize that you take the good with the bad, you know. Yeah. But at least when you're being truthful with people. They, you give them the opportunity, the opportunity. Truth and all of that. You give them the dignity for them to choose for themselves. You know, they'll you, respect you more. When you lie to people, man, you steal their dignity. You, know, mm-hmm. you take away their integrity because now they, they're not sure what they're reacting off things that you tell them, and then someone else might tell them, and "Hey, it's not that's real. A, it's it's not like real. an illusion. It's like an illusion." So you're actually stealing that from somebody, you know, because they don't know. You know, <laughs> yeah, right. And other people will view it and they'll be like, "Oh, he or she don't know," you know. Yeah. So that's what you're doing. That's why it's better to be real, I think. Now. I want to appreciate. I want to say that I appreciate you sharing the stuff that you shared as well today. And mm. just being present and not, like, second-guessing this experience. Like, when I asked you to be on the show, you were, like, all for it from the jump. <laughs> it's gung-ho. That, right? that meant a lot to me. I was like, this fucking guy, where has he been? He should be my friend from, like, a decade ago. Like, I feel like, you know, like... Yeah. Uh, I just want to extend my appreciation and say thank you for being on the show tonight and uh, talking with me and the people and you know this. It's not the end. Like this is just part one. Yeah, of an ever, that's what I think. An no ongoing problem. thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm here anytime. You know. Thank you. Yeah. Um, one last thing to close out uh, for the people who are listening. If you could leave them with anything, any type of message, any type of, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. thought process or you know some something of something to inspire them any type of message yeah. what would you say to the people yeah if you're struggling just literally keep pushing because i know how tough it is into the mic that's a pet peeve yeah. Yeah, yeah right there right there <laughs> yeah like if you're struggling just keep pushing don't be um don't be lost in the future or in the past right just stay present and that's what really helped me a lot and when you are killing it Remember that, because there's a lot of people around you that aren't. Um, they may be down in their life or whatever. And so, if you are really feeling good about yourself, like reach out to those people, talk to them. Like just having a simple conversation can make a big difference. And that's really about about it for that. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the Who and How Club. You are the Who and How Club. I am the Who and How Club. We are the Who and How Club. Let's uh. Some claps for today's episode. <laughs> episode three in the can. Mm. We see the mugs. Mm-hmm. Let's cheers one last time, sir. They see the logo. Hashtag TWHC on uh, Instagram, Twitter. Mm. Eye to eye. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm on it. Toast to the gods. Toast to the energy. Toast to the universe. Toast to the dogs. Dog backwards is God. And they're here protecting us, looking at me <laughs> eye to eye. Look Literally, the other one's looking at the front door, and this one is looking. It's protecting yeah. us straight he up. He knows this neighborhood. Uh, I want to um, knight you. It's official. Oh. Who and how club buttons. Oh, You're an yeah. official member of the club. Who and how club merch coming soon. And uh, wear this with pride, sir, because you, you mean something to me. Mm-hmm. I just want to let you know that regardless of work, regardless of you being on the show tonight, just because I asked you, you are important to this world. Mm-hmm. Being a Taurus, your name, it all means something. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wouldn't have asked you on the show if you didn't mean anything, if I didn't realize how much you actually meant to me mm-hmm. as a person, as a sage, as the guy who you are today. I yeah. could see something when I looked at you. I said, this guy i need to have a conversation with him yeah no so, i appreciate it so thank you yeah i'm so excited to be here you know jack 100 percent. yeah with that said ladies and gentlemen holler at us at who how uh at who how club on all social uh media 
you know platforms just a heads up i premiered uh the track on the last episode you guys will have access to that on the 12th on some streaming sites it'll be uh, out on the 11th but majority will be on the 12th so look out for the quickie part one that's coming out next weekend uh, i got more music coming i got more guests coming i got more episodes coming thank you again come fuck with your boy Eris Dejan, Who and How Club, Sage, mm. Deuces. Yeah, we're out. <laughs> Peace out. Sorry, anything else? You want to say bye? No. <laughs> <laughs> huh? See, he left. He left. He right? left. He, he knew. knew. We were done. He knew we were done with it. Now That's, that's what I'm telling you, man. That's that energy. <laughs> yeah, he knows. Look at him. I like to say, uh, P- I don't like to do peace like this anymore. Mm. This is like divided. Mm-hmm. I feel like we've been doing it wrong. This is like together. Mm-hmm. So I always say peace like this now. I don't even do this. Like I feel like divided. I always point out words. What's this? This is like God and me. Okay, okay. Yeah. This is like um, together we stand, divided we fall. Mm. So I sense. feel like this shit is like wrong. Mm. But anyway. I always do this now. Yeah, that's how I like to. To the gods, toast to the gods. This has been great. Deuces, everybody. Next Mm -hmm. week. Mm Mm-hmm.